Good morning and welcome to Coffee Conversations. I am, uh, as usual, but I am really excited today to in, um, introduce and also invite and welcome Greta Bayrami to the show today. Greta is a f phenomenal. I mean, wait till you, everyone who's on the call right now, you're going to love this today. So my name is Heidi Ellsworth. I'm with Rupert's Coffee Shop and this is Coffee Conversations. I got a little ahead of myself. Um, I do want to make sure everybody um, knows about their panel, um, their control panel on the side. Feel free to ask questions, to chat. Um, if you wanna come on as a panelist, we'll bring you on on video or you can do audio or we'll just ask the questions, wherever, whatever you're comfortable with. And so we are going to get to going this morning on our conversations. Good morning, Greta. Good morning. Thank you for having me today. I'm very excited. Oh, this, I have been so looking forward to this. So for everyone out there, Greta is the CEO of Golden Group, and she has a powerhouse roofing company out of Massachusetts. She is also the treasurer on the NERCA board and also has been very involved, and this is where we met, with National Women in Roofing. So, um, Greta, let's get started and have you just tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Um, I want, I'm excited for them to meet you and get to know you better. Well, thank you. I mean, I am your, I call myself the rootless success story. My story started in um, Tirana, Albania, which is a big way from here. Um, my parents <laughs> were really seeking a better future for us and the United States was really the promised land. So in two, year 2000, my mom and my dad and myself migrated here to the United States and I was very much living my American dream. Um, you know, you grow up watching television, seeing Hollywood, seeing New York, and you, you, that's that's what you envision the United States to be. And even though where I ended up, Worcester, wasn't very much like that, Worcester, <laughs> Massachusetts wasn't New York, but it was still my American dream. And I went through all the cycles of learning the language um, to trying to better myself academically, to trying to select the college of my dreams. And I'm very grateful that, that I was given the opportunity by my parents to embark on this new future for myself here in the United States. Wow, you know, your story, I, I can remember you telling us your story about on um, college too. And um, I love the fact that there's a little bit of a common um, connection here between coffee conversations and what you thought you wanted to do in college until you discovered yeah. this great roofing industry. So why don't you tell us a little <laughs> bit about that too? Of course. So like everybody else, I was 18 years old, ready to head off to law school. And, you know, I made some decisions that changed my life. And I don't like to say they changed my life for the negative because, you know, I was, my daughter was welcomed into my life. It was very unplanned pregnancy. It was very, you know, sad moment in my life because I felt that all my dreams were going to collapse. I felt unworthy of people's love and attention. And I felt like I had failed my parents and myself. I had failed my American dream. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in those moments I had to reinvent myself. So I actually unenrolled at a Suffolk and I re-enrolled in a local university, state university because I needed all the money um, to raise my daughter. Uh, and that was a very, looking back at it, I was a very mature 18 year old woman because I decided to put everything on hold. And, you know, was I going to sacrifice career or was I gonna sacrifice, you know, giving my daughter the perfect childhood? And, and of course the answer was the career. And I went to Worcester State University. I studied business because I knew that there was no way I was gonna go to law school you know, with a child and trying to maintain a marriage. And then in my senior year, I was really looking for work and nobody was hiring because we were very much post-recession. And I saw this Craigslist ad and Craigslist was like big back then. People would sell like stuff and they would put job listings, like random stuff. And I saw this guy saying, roofing foreman, $250, $300 a day. And of course, as a college student, I'm saying, oh my God, like I could work seven days a week. <laughs> and, 
and I called him and he was actually in New Hampshire. So it was about an hour and a half away from my house, but I didn't care. Like, I was like, I will drive to you. I will come to you. And I think he was so shocked that I was a girl calling that he told me to come and interview. And I ended up getting the job that's very same day. And next day I was on a construction job site. They threw me right in, um, you know, no real training. I and I remember people talking about ice and water shield and I had read in the book that it was leak barrier. So I couldn't really make the connection what they were talking about. So it took me like a good three hours to realize that there was an alternative name from the textbook. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it. That's me straight from college classroom and roofing foreman on construction sites. I love it. I love it. Well, okay. So from there, how did you get owning your own? How'd you start your own company? I mean, that. Well, I don't believe in passion as much as I believe in skill, right? I know everybody says, find your passion and it'll lead you to great things. But I also think passion is something that sometimes comes along the way. Like take, for example, your restauranteur who maybe never knew he wanted to own a restaurant, but he started off working as the salad boy because he needed a summer job. And then he became a line cook. And then he ended up becoming the best restauranteur there was. There's so many of those stories. So, you know, I don't think I was passionate about roofing when I first started, but while I was in it, I started to like it. And I started to think of these different ideas. And I'm a big believer in that. Sometimes, especially in COVID-19 type mm -hmm. of scenario, sometimes it's skill that leads us into the road of passion. And sometimes we got to embark on things that we're good at. And I was good at managing. I was good at talking. I spoke two languages, so they hired me. Um, and then while I was doing the day-to-day -day stuff, I said, Ooh, I could do this. I could do this differently. There's some stuff missing that Greta has. And at that time I offered my boss a, um, a, a opportunity to let me franchise. He made me an offer. It was very sharky offer. So I ended up telling him that I was going to complete my, all my work. And then we would part ways. And that was in October, 2015. So although I had incorporated Golden Group since 2012, it really didn't go take off until 2015 when I finally told my general contractor that I was working for that I would no longer really babysit his work. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> I wouldn't form his work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and um, now Freddie, and your husband and you, you co are co-founders. And yes. how how did that all come to, come to be? And how is that working today? Well, when we had this idea, Freddie and I were I I actually had the idea, and he was the said he was the let's go do it. And Freddie's very much operations. He doesn't like the branding. He doesn't like you know the upper you know the the bigger picture. He's very much like give me something to do and I'll do it. So I had this idea. I said, what if we create a, a roofing company that feels like a restaurant, right? Like the customer is always right. We give gifts to the customer. Yeah. You know, we, it's all about the customer. We custom make everything for the experience of the customer because we had both worked our whole life in restaurants and Freddie actually comes from a restaurant background. His father had owned three restaurants. Um, so it was, that was the idea. It's like, let's make a roofing company that makes you feel like you're walking into your mama's Italian restaurant in, you know, <laughs> <laughs> in New York City so uh, that was it that was the and you know it ended up working Freddie's very muted when it comes to uh, he just really likes operations and he he kills it I mean the reviews are really him because the craftsmanship is everything to us I mean that's what started Golden Group we started this four months so we knew that we did when we were going to open the doors of Golden Group it was going to be all about the hands and the roof why? Because they're often left unappreciated for, and I know everybody says they are appreciated, but really like how many homeowners actually know the roofers and know their names and their stories? Not yeah. many, because they didn't know my story and I was the foreman and, and I'm a chit chatter. So if nobody knew me, imagine the yeah. guys on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. So you're bringing everybody out to share the stories and to really show, like you said, the craftsmanship of roofing. I think that's that's phenomenal. How and I see that I was on your website, which is totally cool, and I saw that you really highlight your people, you bring them out. You're on. It's uh, it's very progressive, but welcoming, like a restaurant. I didn't even think about that. I think that is just an excellent correlation. So tell us a little bit more about your team and um, the people who are working for you and how you kind of have structured your company. 
Yeah, I mean, it goes back to that our work is our word and, you know, the work speaks for Golden Group. It doesn't really have to speak for itself. So when we opened the doors, the mission was always craftsmanship. So we knew that we had to hire the best and really harvest the best. I'm a big believer in harvesting the yeah. best. And, you know, that all comes down to just being, you know, it's not, you can say company culture because it's very textbook definition, but it really comes down to mm. you being the day-to-day -day activities. Like, for example, I always go with the roofers every single week. Like, I make sure to visit a job site. I make sure to be there with the team. And that attitude was from day one. Like from day one of starting the company, I was there every single day with them. Like I knew their struggles. I knew what upset them. When I knew material being late was like their biggest hate. You know, they hate that their whole yeah. day gets messed up if something's not there. So I, I knew their emotions and I made sure that their emotions were identified in the culture of the team so so they could get respected and, and appreciated. And and also I knew what the sales team suffered on, you know, and, and I was there to support them. So I think we built a team that we've built because Freddie and I are very much, no matter how big we'll get, we'll always find time um, to to be in the day-to-day -day activities with a particular department in a given week. And I think that's what separates Golden Group so much. Like I make sure to sit with my office manager and join her and, you know, watch her work because then I get to see her frustration, what she likes, what she doesn't like. Then I get to go back to the drawing board and find an alternative to make everybody happy because obviously cultures are always changing and work environments are always changing. So as the CEO, you have to be able to adapt to that. Exactly. Exactly. You know, we're going through the exact same things at the coffee shop. You know, we're a small business and we're adapting and trying to stay ahead of everything that's going on. And, um, and you know, I, I think sometimes employees almost get tired of you asking like, everything good, everything all right. You know, you kind of working with them and, but I, I just don't think you can ask that enough to really care. And that's exactly what I see with what you're doing with all, all of your employees. Exactly. Thank you. Um, so I just want to remind everybody, we've got a lot of people on here. This is awesome. Thank you so much for being here this early in the morning. Um, please ask questions if you raise your hand or you ask questions. We've got Miss Megan Ellsworth in the background, our show engineer, and she'll um, get you on as a panelist or chat with you on how you would like to ask your questions. Um, what I would like, to, so we're going to, we had questions come in ahead of time, so we're going to keep going as yours come in. So let's, Greta, just give us, you know, one of the reasons we started Coffee Conversations was so that everyone around the country could kind of get a feel for what was happening in different parts. So, you know, we had Rackley talk about the Southeast and Tennessee, what's happening. We had Wendy Marvin talk about the Pacific Northwest. So tell us what's happening in the Northeast. What are you seeing with COVID? How's your business? Kind of give us the, the big picture. Yeah, of course. So for the most part, things are obviously okay. I mean, we have been hit about 40%, but I mean, there's still 60% operations happening. So with that in mind, we can very much maintain our overheads and survive this. You know, this is just like an impact and you have to be ready for it. And you have to hope that you make it on the other side. Like this is not about profits anymore, especially not for me as an owner. This is just really about surviving and surviving with a whole team and not losing anybody. I very much like to think that I'm like a cruise ship captain. We've had a bad storm. It's not about smooth rides anymore. It's just about making it to shore. And that's the mentality that I've adapted because that's what allows me to be healthy in my mind because there's so many emotions that I go through every day. You know, I'm sad sometimes, sometimes I'm angry and sometimes I'm just excited saying, you know what, it's fine because September is going to be amazing. Like we're going to have so much yeah. fun and we're going to kill it because it's untraditional. But at the same time, going into COVID, we were very well positioned because being a millennial entrepreneur and really being a tech person already put me in such a good field that when COVID hit, nothing really changed about the process. The only thing that changed is maybe we didn't have that human interaction, which is obviously key to making sure somebody feels your genuine and your integrity yeah. and your soul. But every much everything else maintained the same because we were always digitally present. A lot of our, 90% of our clientele is on search. Um, and then with the way we deliver everything was always done through Zoom and, and full disclosure proposals. So that didn't change. Um, so I think we were positioned very well uh, and we're so thankful that we had always been digitally forward, but also it was a, it was a big eye opener because sometimes being digitally forward, I would get criticized by other roofers saying that, 
you know, we were taking away from the experience. And I was such always such a big advocate of saying, I don't think so. I don't think you're taking away from the craftsmanship because here I am a company that's known for craftsmanship. And here I am a company that uses digital equipment every day. And I felt bad because, you know, those companies had a very hard time transitioning. Those companies yeah. had a very hard time and still are having a hard time because this could be very much the future for for a long time. You know, I don't I don't know when people are going to be super comfortable to have people in their home again. It might take a year, it might take two, we don't know. So, you know, things here are definitely down, but at this point in time, it's just about surviving the storm. And, and obviously as a roofer to speak to other roofers, we're also noticing that it's becoming a com- competitive, a, a lot of competition out there in the sense that the homeowners, you know, I know the news talks about how the roofers or like people are trying to scam homeowners. I don't know if you've seen, like, there's different industries that keep saying they're trying to take advantage, but also the consumers are taking advantage. You know, I'm seeing it so much right now where the consumers are sort of pinning roofers against each other and actually a lot of industry. So I actually call those (laughs) clients out and I tell them, don't do that. Don't put already struggling businesses against each other because it's just so sad. Um, So I try to think that I try to educate my neighbors at the very least. Um, so I think as as humans in this podcast today, if we can educate at least one group of neighbors to not do that, to not seek just red set price reductions because businesses are vulnerable, they'll do it. But you're essentially you're scamming the business. That's true. That is that is so true. And I'm sure a lot of people are going through that right now. And but you know, going back to also with your digital, I know when I went on on your homepage. You, first thing, let us give you a virtual proposal. Let us, I mean, you. this isn't just having a webpage. This is actually, you're talking through your webpage digitally and encouraging people to come here. Even before COVID, how was that experience? What, I mean, what are you seeing? Because personally, as a consumer, I love that. I, you know, <laughs> I, I'm just not about the kitchen table presentation. So yeah, what are you so- hearing from your customers? Yeah. They, they love it. You know, the idea behind the Golden Group website, and if I can give any roof for a tip here today, is if you can find a web developer to be on retainer and touch your page at least once a week, it's going to be gold because it's essentially you're going to treat your website as a blogger, would, right? Or as a person on social media influencer would. Your website will become your talking point to your clients, to, re- to, to anybody really that is interested about the industry. So that's what the Golden Group website is. The Golden Group website is a website that I actually work about three to four hours a week on. All the content is so fresh. It's always fresh and it's always innovative. Um, so we're always, um, re- we're always answering what's happening. So right now it's COVID-19. So we're answering to that. And how are we answering to that? Well, we're making virtual appointments. We're making book online now. We're making calculate your cost now. Like that's really scary when people mm-hmm. tell me why you have all your pricing. And I'm a big believer that yes, my pricing might fall victim to the wrong hands, aka the competition, or it could also fall hands to the potential customers who will see this as an innovative approach because if we have a roofing calculator and all you have to do on there is know the square footage of the roof and boom, you have a price. And it's actually like 99% accurate. Yes, the com- the competitor might get that, but that's not what leads the company. It's not the being afraid of what competitor might get because the competitor might get it regardless, maybe slower, but regardless, he'll get it. It's about innovating for the client. And what better way to innovate for the client than to let them have prices and ideas right from their kitchen you know, table. And that's what this really was about, was create a platform that has all the cards facing up because that's where the industry is going. I mean, your new homeowners are 15 to 20 right now, and they are digitally savvy individuals that grew up with an iPhone or an iPad. So they're not gonna want necessarily sit down appointments. They're, this is the world that they grew right. up in. That, you know, I think you are right. I always like to refer to that as take the rear view mirror down, right? Don't even look behind you. You're, the way you're going, you're going so um, progressive and you're just doing what's right for the customer. And to be able to spend that kind of time on your business instead of worrying about competitors taking things or whatever that may be, um, that, and I, and I really do think that's also very indicative of your generation. Um, you are, you look at things different. I mean, I have, um, 
kind of scary to say, Greta, but I have kids your age. And um, <laughs> I just have the greatest respect. I mean, I just think what this next generation is going to do for our economy, for roofing overall, of course, but just the world overall is, is pretty amazing. So part of that is um, being, uh, you know, we had a question here, <clears throat> excuse me, about your employee engagement, because I know you've been working with GAF. I mean, as in you're one of their contractors. I know you've been doing a lot of things, really sharing. Again, it's indicative, I think, of your generation of let's just share and get out there and be progressive. So tell me some of the things that you're doing on employee engagement. <clears throat> Sorry, as I lose my voice in the Pacific Northwest. Is, is the question employee engagement in terms of like social media and in terms of like everyday grind, um, then yeah, we want yes. everybody, you know, a lot of companies when they brand their, their businesses, they brand them very much like we the people, you know, I like to use that analogy, like, uh, you know, they try to make it something that's like very formal, very, <laughs> very founding father speech. And I like to do a different approach. I think the people make the brand and, you know, and it hits different chords and different viewers. So I like very much to let people realize that the brand's feel and emotions are of those of the individuals that it, that it hires and that it employs. And I like to keep them very front and centered because I don't want it to always be my voice. I want it to be the roofer's voice the manager's voice, the marketing voice, you know, the foreman's voice, and they're all characters. You know, we all, we always, so that's in one way we always engage the team is we make sure that they're all equally a part of the brand. You know, some, sometimes on Instagram or on social media, we will really portray the image of one particular employee versus another, because again, it's a different audience. So if, if we brand our companies with the emotion and the characteristics of the people we employ, we open up the pool to so much more because maybe somebody doesn't like me that much, you know, but, but maybe they love, but maybe they love who I employ. And that's really what it's about. And we switched that philosophy actually three years ago because three years ago it was very much like we here at Golden Group. And we took that away. We stripped all that language. We're like, we're not gonna talk like that anymore. We're we're gonna find a way to speak to people and speak to them with the emotions and the characteristics of the people that we employ. So I hope I that, answered that correctly. That is, <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. As I, as I was coughing through the question, um, and, and I'm not sick, we're all good. <laughs> Just a little bit of morning frog. Um, okay, you and I yesterday, I and um, I, I'm gonna call out Jenny Stone. I'm not sure if she's on here or not. Oh, she is. She is on this morning. So yesterday, Greta, you and I were talking about this and we were um, talking about um, Jennifer is really strong on this too. And that is safety on the roof. And a lot of what's going on right now with social media and with um, people not, you know, and I don't even going to say anything else. I want you to share what you shared with me yesterday, because I think it's such a different perspective and it's so important. Yeah, I mean, on social media, as more and more roofers get social media savvy, we have to be careful about the content that we produce and what we're really promoting. Because although you may not care necessarily for you, there's so many people that look at your page and, you know, it's one, it's it, maybe you don't want to promote that, but it just comes off that way. So you have to be very careful because if you are a person that people follow you, sometimes you can unintentionally promote something without even realizing. So you have to be very sensitive to that on social media platform as, as us as roofers, whether we're service or product, we have to be very careful with that. What, what message are we promoting? Are we promoting that it's cool to take selfies on roofs? Are we promoting that it's cool to you know walk on ridges? And I'm seeing more and more contractors fail. You know, I'm seeing more and more contractors really do a horrible job at and making our industry look like we're a bunch of like, you know, loosey goosey, like, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Like, like we party up there. Yeah. When the, <laughs> the homeowner's like, go to the roof. And we're like all on our phones making videos. And that's not true. And, and I don't even think it's true for those particular companies necessarily. I just think it was poor judgment or maybe a spur of the moment. But I think as we roofers become more and more social media, I don't want to see us end up always in memes. Yeah, that's nice to make jokes of it, but it's honestly, sometimes it hits really close to home. So 
be careful of who's reading and being receptive to that comments because I, for example, like I'm not saying that I'm OSHA spec 100% of the time. I want to be, and I strive for it every day. And I have had my moments, but I've been coached through those moments and I've made them better for my team and myself. But I don't go around on Instagram prancing about about some roofs, you know, and, and making content. That's not what I do. And my team actually is not allowed to have iPhones on top of the roof because I don't even think that's, I think I'm pretty sure that's no shop violation. Um, <laughs> you know, so, so just be mindful of that. I, I just really hope that instead of people thinking that I'm being, I'm nagging or I'm, I'm, I'm calling people out, I'm not. I'm trying to make you understand that there's young boys and girls, there's few, there's actual roofers that see your content. And maybe if their boss on job sites is telling them every day to put on their harness and you're showing them it's okay not to, maybe you're gonna influence them a certain way. And maybe you don't even know you're doing it. Sometimes it's not about intentionally doing, it's about unintentionally promoting something without even realizing. So just be careful of the images and the photos and videos that you post. You know, I think, you know, we have, um, we have a safety SOS safety looks at every single picture we put out on the coffee shop because, you know, and I love how you said that we've had our moments too, where we've had to learn and be coached through and talk to professionals about making sure that the pictures that are out there are safe and look right. Um, and I know a lot of people are that way. I've been talking about that my whole career safety. You don't put pictures out that are not safe. It just, it just doesn't work. And, but I really like to your um, philosophy on that is that there are so many people trying to do it right. So many owners trying to do it right. And as we are recruiting young people into the industry and they are on TikTok or Instagram or this, and they see it being done wrong, that really sends the wrong message overall. And we want all of our folks to go home safe to their family every night. I mean, it only makes sense. Exactly. So, so what do you do just to kind of share with everybody who's on here? What do you do on um, safety wise, the safety meetings? I mean, I know there's a formula, the toolbox talks and all that, but anything a little bit different that you can share with what you are doing? Well, well I mean, I, I'm sure everybody does this too, but we do, we actually call the OSHA inspectors at least once every quarter to come in an active and still spend the whole day with us. <laughs> <laughs> whatever whatever crew gets it hates me for like a week and I hate myself every time I do it <laughs> not gonna lie I hate myself I'm like why was this a good idea but through them I've learned that it's really a partnership like our last um, OSHA inspector was there in November and he stayed from 7 till 4 30 and he really was, he wasn't there to find that day. He was there to coach and he really coached really well. And we learned so much and we, there were so many spinoff conversations that came out of it. And our roofers really felt proud to answer his questions. And like, every time they get it correctly, he was, he would like give them a pat in the back and they were really happy. So I think sometimes people forget that laborers, like, you know, maybe they didn't go to college, but that doesn't mean that they don't, they're not perceptive to the same sort of educational platform that a university or college or you know any any sort of classroom setting would give and it's your job as an owner to create that classroom setting and to create it in the fact that like let's go to school if you get it right like you know we're we're gonna call you an all-star we're gonna give you an a plus on that and and that's always been the mentality of golden group whether it's safety or product like gaf and certainty know that i'm like I'm the person that every time a product comes out i'm like come and train the guys hurry up like test them test yeah. their knowledge why do I do that? It's not to show off. It's not to, to say it's for the people. It's not for the, that has nothing to do with the consumer. It has so much to do with the state of mind of the employee, of feeling empowered and feeling worthy to continue educating themselves in this industry. So when I invite JF, when I invite Certainty, when I invite OSHA, it's not about having a badge or certification to show the homeowner. It's about empowering the people on the staff so they they feel like, worthy and they, they feel cool that man I'm a certified I'm, I'm I'm this I'm that like this is so much more than roofing to me that is cool so you know what keep going with that talk a little bit about your manufacturer relationships I mean I love the fact that you're bringing them in as soon as there's new products that you're working with them I, I know you're sharing advice also working with your manufacturers so tell us a little bit more about that well, when I first got started into roofing, I knew nothing. So I actually reached out to JS Certainty and ABC Supply House, just to name a few. And I was so impressed of 
even though I had zero dollars of accounts, how they were all like answering the phone and answering the questions. And they said it was so nice to see that people actually read the whole books that they created and and really re um, went through every page in, on their website. And and I told them, you know, I'm treating this, I don't know anything about roofing, but I wanna know everything about roofing. And I was treating it very much like you would a course, you know, in school where I took out all the material, I breathed it, I lived it, I saw it and I wanted more. And I reached out to them and the relationship really began when I had zero dollars in the accounts, when I was buying no product at all. And, and then that relationship continued to grow as I continued to grow. And I never stopped reaching out to them. And I think a lot of contractors don't understand how important they are to the vital of their success. I think a lot of people think they're not accessible, but that's not true. They're very much access accessible, but they also want you to be serious and committed too. Um, mm -hmm. I think that they're selective of who they work with it's, and it's not about sales. I, this is the big misconception. They think it's about sales. It's not about dollars. It's about whether your vision and integrity in the industry aligns with their brand, then they'll endorse you. Otherwise you could always sell their product. Anybody can sell their product, but if you really want their support, it's not about sales. It's just about who you are. And, and I proved to them at an early stage that I was someone worth um, supporting and they've always continued that support. And it's been incredible because they've opened, you know, I go to them with crazy ideas and, and they come back sometimes saying, yeah, we'll do it. And it's, it's kind of amazing of how much love and respect is mutually there. That is great. That, that is awesome. Um, having worked, having worked for many manufacturers, I can't tell you how much I appreciate what you just said. That is the, all the marketing people right now are out there clapping and cheering that someone is actually reading everything that the marketing and technical folks are putting that together. Um, I just want to remind everybody that if you have questions for Greta, please type them into the question box. Um, you don't have to be on audio. You don't have to be on video. We'll just ask her the questions. We do have quite a few here that came in earlier, but I just want to make sure everybody's aware to get on there and this Megan will bring you on. Um, okay, let's talk a little bit. One of the other questions that came on was about NERCA. So um, you, that's the last time I saw you was at the NERCA show. I don't know, last year, obviously not this year, but um, how, tell us a little bit about what's hopping at NERCA and about your position on the executive team as treasurer. That is very cool. You know, my involvement in the roofing industry is much bigger than Golden Group. And I think that was it from day one. I knew I wasn't gonna stop with Golden Group. That was just my entry point. When I realized that I had an, a different way of viewing this industry, especially in the residential side, I knew my commitment was bigger. And when NERCA reached out and they said that they wanted me to be part of the board, I was like, yes, yes. <laughs> I don't even think I finished their sentence. And then when <laughs> being on the board, I was very vocal about the changes that I wanted. And I wanted it to be a change that we, my biggest change that I wish I could do in my lifetime in roofing is change the stigma around saying I'm a roofer or I work for a roofing company. Like for you, maybe for people in the commercial side, they don't feel it as much, but people in the residential side, they do feel it, especially if they're college educated. Like I always try to recruit a lot of talent. And sometimes like the very talented folks tell me that it's not that sexy or it's not that cool to say to an IT friend or to a medical rep friend that I am a roofing consultant. It just doesn't, even though I may, they may be making a lot more money, it just doesn't sound cool. And sometimes that's the reason why they choose not to stay in the industry. So I, with that in mind, I'm like, how can we switch that? How can we switch that state of mind of the younger folks and make them realize, no, listen, it's just as cool to say you're a roofing consultant as it is to say you're an IT consultant and I'm gonna show you why. And I think, especially in the commercial side, this is the bigger picture that this is our job in the next 10 years is if we can change the way roofing is perceived as a career option. And with that in mind, that's why I decided to stay at NERCA when they offered an executive board position as a treasurer. And they, I, you know, of course I said yes and they voted um, on it and they decided that it was a good fit. I promise and I vowed that in my next eight years there, I'll do everything that I can to change that image. And one of those things was actually the NERCA show this year. I was actually going to be an MC walking around with a full production video company, um, capturing all the emotions and all the frustration. We were actually gonna make like a mini show. Um, 
but unfortunately that will be for next year. So that's a little teaser of what's to come, but that was just one way that I was going to change it, you know, right from week one of being treasurer. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I think that is great. I mean, and you, you know, you and I talked about, we kind of just say it how it is, but let's just say it how it is. You are, um, I'm guessing the youngest on the board and one yes. of the few women on the board, right? Yeah. How has yeah. that been? How, I, you just must bring such a breath of fresh air and, and energy to um, the board. I, how is that going? Well, it's going really well. I mean, I'm the only woman ever on their executive board, that's for sure. So I'm making history right there. Um, and there awesome. is a few other women. <laughs> yeah, there's a few other women on the actual board now. So we so we do have a few women that rep that make up that. But, you know, with COVID-19, we didn't really get to do a lot of the stuff we wanted to, but I'm very vocal about change. If I can bring a, a fresh look to NERCA, and make people realize the potential of networking that comes out of these old organizations. That's really my key. It's to make people realize that what you can do once you enter, it's not about putting it on your website. Like if you want this to be a cool logo on your website, like don't, don't sign up. Well, actually I shouldn't say that I'm treasurer. Just sign up either way. No, but, but, the, but the point we'll is- you with your logo. <laughs> The point is, it's not about the logo. It's about the group of people you're entering and, and roofers that have been 100-year companies and, and roofers that have worked on skyscrapers and, and really helped with some of the biggest infrastructure of the buildings you go into every day. And it's, when you think about it that way, it's explosive to be able to have connection to these people. And I'm a big believer in networking. Like, I think that's how we first met, especially in the National Woman in Roofing. I'm a big... Yes outspoken person because I believe that nobody knows your needs if you're not if they're not spoken and I'm not apologetic about that like I don't mind walking into a room and letting people know like this is what I need can you help me because people do that to me all the time that's just how I present myself I present myself as a person of help and resource and people come to me for help and resource yeah. so I do the same like when I walk into a wealth builder or a nurka show I'm always looking for networking opportunities and connections that could help me grow um, and then of course, I'm always willing to do for the same. And I think sometimes people become so sheltered or they think they've already innovated enough and they don't open up um, the view into the potential, the potential of any of these organizations, whether it's NERCA, NRCA, or National Women Roofing or, or Roofers Cough Shop, it's the potential that you're seeking. It's, yeah. not, it's not the yearly <laughs> membership. Well, and what I love is, you know, I've been, we just started these coffee conversations and you reached out to me and you're like, Heidi, hey, I want to do more yeah. with Rivers Coffee Shop. What can I do? Yeah. And I'm like, oh man, fangirl. I was so excited. Um, and I have to tell you, I'm not the only one. Kevin, um, the vice president of NERCA, Kevin, I'm gonna, Kevin, I hope I say your last name right. Kamposki, Kamposki. Um, he just said, we love having Greta on the board. So you're getting some kudos coming in too. Um, thank you, Kevin. But that is cool. So so you're going around and you're capturing the the passion, the um, uniqueness of the roofing industry at the show next year with video. What are some of the other things that you hope to see? Um, kind of you know new things, innovations. Um, obviously driving some membership with NERCA. Any other things to share? I think with NERCA, I mean, I can't speak for the whole board, but I can speak for myself. My goal that they let me is to make it more accessible locally to different states, like make a lot more on the ground events um, and make events that they really care about. So they're events that are sensitive to what's happening that particular quarter or that particular season. Um, that's really my focus. My focus is to draw us out of the boardroom and bring us to where accessible, you know, and I'll start that mission for myself. I know some of the other guys on the board are definitely a lot busier, but uh, you know, as, as they should be because they have mega companies. But, but the point is if I can draw myself out and make myself accessible, then I can hear the frustrations and I can hear the loves and the likes, and then I can take that back to the boardroom and then we can innovate. We can think of a way because the brand, you know, with, with everything, we have to change, right? We always have to innovate. I always call it like, you almost have to get rid of your clothes and put another pair on, especially that's how I view Golden Group. I say, I feel like Golden Group is getting ready for like 
her wedding day, like if she's a female, and then eventually I have to change her out of it. Like it takes me so long to get her ready, but eventually I have to freshen her up. And that's really what branding, whether it's um, whether it's a nonprofit organization or if it's a business, it's really what it is about. It's your capability to say, look, it was good. It got us where we have to go, but now we have to strip it down and we have to start it again. And start fresh. Yep. I've been there many times. That is so wise. That is that is excellent. And in fact, Brad, Brad, thanks for being on again. Brad Sons, the immediate past president, just said, so proud of having Greta on our executive team and to be part of her journey to become our first woman president of NERCA. Um, that gives me chills. I'm really excited about that. Um, just want to thank her for making NERCA part of her commitment. So thank that's you, really Brad. cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, that, it's exciting. that is it's awesome. exciting stuff. It's really big stuff. I mean, you know, somebody asked me the other day in another podcast, like what, what motivates me to wake up every morning? And I'll always answer it's the legacy. It's not, yeah. it's not Golden Group. It's, it's, although Golden Group is another reason, it's the legacy. I think if you lead with legacy of what you can leave behind, you really start to seek change and, and change starts with you. And and I think some of the biggest people or some of the smallest people in the world have made the biggest change. And I'm, I'm so small in roofing. Like if you think about the mega companies of the people listening, I'm so small. And, and the only reason I'm seeking change is because I'm leading with legacy. I'm leading of what could Greta's name be remembered when she's long gone. And that's what yeah. motivates me every morning is leaving something behind on a Google search or maybe maybe on a cloud <laughs> platform that says, that says a cool story of this immigrant Albanian girl um, teen mom who who changed, who changed, who seek change and actually attributed to a lot of change within this particular industry. And that's that's what wakes me up every morning to continue striving forward. Well, you're doing it. You're doing it big time. Um, and I love it. Since the minute we met with National Women in Roofing, the thing, I think the thing I love is National Women in Roofing has made so many connections and we have all found so many dear friends, but I love it when I see too uh, that you are taking that out to the industry as a whole, right? You know, we it's kind of like we're almost an incubator, right? We incubate, we, we get, it, get each other all going and then we're like, go, and you've just I mean, exploded. So, and there's all kinds of comments coming in. One from Megan Jen, um, Jenkins um, saying she is a rock star. She's fangirling on you right now. And also um, from Lenny, met Greta and her team last year. She not only is a client of mine, but great inspiration. So you're, you. you're inspiring a lot of people, Greta. Yeah, I mean, it gives me chills. You're gonna, guys are gonna make me cry. But honestly, I never, <laughs> you know, my story was paycheck to paycheck and roofing was, you know, it's such a beautiful, I'll, maybe I'll write a book on it one day, but I never thought I was gonna even be able to afford a home, let alone help people achieve their dreams every day. So I'm so lucky that this industry gave me a platform where I could really seek my American dream because in 2012, if you had asked me if I'd be sitting here, you know, speaking to some people that I look up to every day, I would tell you you're crazy because at that point in time I was making I think eighteen thousand dollars a year. I was a broke college student with a baby in my arms. So life is really all about taking skill and opportunity. And you know, like I said, I'm I'm the leader that's going to tell you. You know what? I'm not going to tell you seek passion because that's very hallmark. I'll let another entrepreneur do that. I'm going to tell you seek a skill that you're good at. Apply yourself to something, and you never know what you can become capable of because that's my story. I, I applied a skill that I knew to roofing and look at me now, I ended up having not only passion, but love and innovation for the industry that, that really seeked me out of my, my dark moments in life. <laughs> yeah, I love that. You know, I feel 100 plus percent the same. Roofing has given me the best, not just a career or profession, but a family. I mean, the roofing family and is it's I think it's amazing. So you need to write that book because it is amazing in the fact that people still don't understand that and they don't understand how tight this industry is and how much it gets, how welcoming it is. You know, we always talk about the bad things and kind of the, you know, we got it and we do have to improve the image of the industry, but we don't, I don't think enough talk about all the good things and how um, amazing the people are who are in roofing and what they're doing to protect. I mean, right now in the midst of COVID, they're protecting, you're protecting families um, 
all through your area and contractors across the country. So what are you hearing from um, some of your customers? What are you hearing? You know, give us some of that feedback from your customers, both during the COVID and overall, like long-term customers, because it's it's not just the other roofing contractors you work with, but it's also all these awesome community, right? Yeah, well, I mean, if you ever see me walking into a room and you hear me, I hear somebody say it's just a roof, I like stop and have a coaching moment. I'm probably one day going to be like on the news because somebody's probably going to like say, get out of here. But <laughs> I, I always tell people that a roof is a need, right? And, and it protects everything. It protects your wife's designer closet, your your custom granite countertops, your hardwood floors. And, and I really despise when people take like two minutes of their schedule to book a roofer and then they spend three weeks at Home Depot picking up bedroom color. It's like we got we got to change that perception. So with with the, with the consumers, I'm always advocating for reversing the way people understand roofing. I'm actually getting on a webinar today with the local business um, Better Business Bureau, and maybe I encourage other roofers to do that. I was actually very fortunate to reach out to all the Better Business Bureaus in Massachusetts, and I told them, "Hey, can we can we create webinars to make people understand roofing?" And they were like, "Sure, let's do it." And, I was surprised that they have over 25 people signed up today. Um, that's a really good number to me. And I'm like, if I can keep doing that and other roofers can keep doing that, we can hopefully change the way people will enter the roofing process. And, and from a customer perspective, um, we really try to lead with knowledge and we really try to make them understand roofing and what it is before we even try to sell them anything. And that's sort of been my mission with the community. As a leader in the community, I've tried to make events to make people understand roofing. And it starts with, I tell them like, how long do you spend on, you know, bedroom colors and how long do you spend yeah. on roofing? Let, let's talk about that. Let's talk about why you chose to put it in that order when a roof is going to protect every single thing, including your children, including you um, when yeah. the next storm hits. And you guys get the storms. <laughs> yeah, we do. We do get those winter, those two. I mean, we're not as bad as pale, you know, but we do get winter storms. And I like to, to like, I like to... I like to paint a picture. I make people say, imagine walking down your hallways, you have your, your children sound asleep, you have your paintings hung up of your precious memories. And imagine if that could all be destroyed by one horrible leak, you wouldn't feel too good about that. So what are you doing as a consumer to properly respect the thing that protects you from everything else? Yes, yes. Are you are you seeing a difference in, um some of the communications with homeowners while they're, since they're at home sheltering in with COVID, are you kind of, do you see any kind of a little switch on them realizing how important it is, their home and their shelter? Yes and no. I mean, for the most part, it's still the same, but I think for me personally, I encourage every other roofer to lead the conversation how I just led it a moment ago. That's what I'm doing differently. I'm making people realize that they are home and their right. home is the most important thing to them. That's literally what a lot of people are fighting to keep their home, you know, due to losses of businesses and unemployment. So if this is something they care about so dearly, then why do they show it no respect? Why do they, why do they do zero research? Why do they say yes to the first person in the door? Like they're not help, they're not helping us better right. ourselves if they are not respecting, you know, the roof of their home. So I'd like to switch it up, but but for the most part, it's very, it's been consistent. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be a long journey to change the residential homeowner to respect roofing as they should. I mean, for the most part, I think we've gotten better. I would definitely say maybe 20% better than it was in 2012, but I think it's still a long journey to completely switch that mindset. Yeah, it is, but you got to start somewhere and that's what you've been doing. And that's what's so good. Um, we did have just another um, comment that came in from Emery Smith. Kudos to you for entering a male-influenced father-to-son legacy. We have always done it this way, industry. Just the right time to expand the contribution, especially in the residential marketplace. I love the comment about understanding the contribution of roofing um, in the customer design world. Education is great. So thank you, Emery. Thank That's you. exactly what you're saying. That is cool. So we have about we have just about 10 minutes left. And so I want to... I, I kind of want to end and go back a little bit on technology because you have really taken the technology um, and pushed it to the forefront of your business. So can you kind of go through a little bit on what technologies 
you, you know, what are some of your favorites and what do you see have really started to make a difference in your business? Well, I mean, I'll start it um, for the residential people listening or maybe just anybody listening. I'll just start it from the World Wide Web. Uh, it's free. So I, I like to utilize the internet to my full capacity. I'm not a big believer on paid um, third party engines like, like Home Advisor. I'm just not a big, you know, we're listed there just to have a listing, but we don't actually spend any money on that platform. Um, I'm a big believer in, of using the, the free YouTube, Google, Facebook, Instagram. So that right there is how that's tech right there. Um, next, I'm a big believer in book online. I know it sounds cheesy. It's so easy. It's like a $20 thing to add to your website a month, but you wouldn't believe the amount of, of uh, appointments we've had increased just since we add, just since we added book now. You know how this came about? It came about me. I go on opentable.com because I'm too lazy to call restaurants to see if they have a table. <laughs> and I said, maybe people don't call roofers because they're just so lazy and they put it off forever. And then maybe they just like end up going with one random guy. I don't know. But since we put book now and we have our whole calendar online and they can pick from every appointment option they want, the numbers have really increased like and dramatically i'd say by at least 35 percent like people are just and it's so much better for our office manager because now people book themselves um and then next i would say you know using things like drones has saved our life tremendously i know a lot of roofers do this as well um that's changed our lives so much like our ability to keep guys safe on the ground and just have a drone fly up has been revolutionary and then after that um we do custom proposals. I actually invested in a custom CRM. That's not to say that AccuLinks and MarketSharp are not amazing. I actually built one for my team. It was about um, $15,000 one-time um, investment, but um, it saves me a lot of money because now I'm not hooked up to monthly memberships and, and fees. Uh, I just I just buy cloud storage like, like the CRMs would. Um, so that's innovative wow. right there. I built my own. And the reason I built my own is because I wanted to have my own language entirely, how we operate. And a lot of the, the CRM that we were finding, just we couldn't really cater it 100% to us. That's not to say that those aren't great. We actually used other ones before we got to this point. So um, that's one way. And then we use Hover 3D for the virtual consultations with clients. Clients really love that. I know it's like a $20 to $30 investment per client, but people really enjoy having a 3D model of their home. Um, I would say it helps convert so many jobs just from that alone. And then of course we use Zoom, <laughs> like everybody <Yeah>. else, <laughs> to meet everybody. So we use a lot of technology, and it, but, it, but honestly, if I could go back to it, nothing starts without the search engines. and you know, as a girl who was an immigrant, like I wasn't going to go telling anybody that my dad owned a roofing company. Like, how was I going to get clients? Right. And Google, Google was my answer. So I've always been there and I've always been very digitally present there. So I always recommend people to go back to the basis and make sure you are so strong in those, because if you are, you will not need any third parties to help you um, gain new clients. That is really good. That um, I mean, built your own CRM. That's amazing. I love it. And um, you know, I I don't think I, I agree with you. I don't think that's for everyone. But with when you can, and you can really bring that into the culture of your business, like you said, that is um, that's really inspirational. I I have a little bit of a follow up question on drones because we get this question a lot. Like, how do we even use drones? What what makes sense? So. Can you go just a little bit more deeper on how you use the drones? Do you use before the job, during the job, after the job? How's that work? Well, we use them. We use them during the sales call to really get up, especially to keep roofers. A lot of homeowners, when they call, they want the roofer always on the roof when they do the home inspection. I'm not opposed to it, but I'm not a fan of it. You know, I've had guys sometimes tell me, "Oh man, I went up, but I was really scared. I was by myself. You know, even though I have my safety stuff, I, I wish I had had another guy on site just in case." And when I hear that, that upsets me. So I'm like, All right, "Let's bring in drones." So we actually fly the drones to make um, full inspection reports, and we get it really, really close because then we can zoom into the picture, and the quality is insane. And then we can go over with um, Pick Stitch. It's like one app you can go over and you just highlight the areas that are damaged. Same thing. Like instead of highlighting the chalk on the roof. You're just doing it now digitally. You're just taking the picture and then you're using a red marker, you know, in an application to circle those um, affected areas. So that's how we do it. Some homes, of course, you can't fly a drone because there's tall trees. So in those scenarios, we wouldn't be able to fly. But 
I think for the most part, the drones go up about 70% of the time, especially when we need to do a really full in-depth report with a lot of photography. Wow, that's good. You just had a kudos on the drone use on home inspections because I think I really do think there's um, a lot of um, contractors out there who just are like, I just don't know what how to use it, you know. And so showing that how and in the sales process, that's brilliant because even now with sheltering in, you can fly a drone and you can do that virtually, so you don't have still yeah. don't have to go in the house. I mean, just statistically speaking, um, if you flew a drone and took photo, photos and videos of a particular job site and created a full detailed report, like like an architect or an you know or an interior designer would, I guarantee you, I'm confident to say 80% of the time that will sell. Um, it's sold for wow. us actually every single time. Every single time we do a full inspection of photography videos and we present it to them, similar to what like a home builder or architect would. Those right. projects always convert because the homeowner is so shocked that you took the time to prepare them a 20 page report. That's all about their home. And we actually, we actually use website like yours to create those and, and we use the NRCA. You know what I do? I actually go in, I say what's wrong. And then I also take the textbook definition of what's wrong and I put them side by side with their photo. And then I move, I move them through, like I narrate to them the whole story. And then in the end, I give them alternative solutions to, um, you know, to fit, I give them three to four alternatives and they're so shocked. Like, they're like, this is so cool. I've never seen my house like this, or at least from this point of view. Yeah. It's, and you're right. It's like you, you've become the interior decorator or the interior designer that they, they Im imagine that way. And now you're like doing that same process. And all of a sudden it totally flips their process of how they're thinking and how they're buying. That's exactly. brilliant. I love it. I love it. Okay. Well, we are getting to close to the end of our hour. Greta, I, I mean, this has gone so fast. I could just keep going for another hour. No problem. I love hearing everything you have to say. I want everybody to know that Greta is has already submitted um, one article for us as a guest blogger, and she's going to be sending us some more. And we're going to be doing a couple on, um, we're going to be doing a lot more with Greta and really excited about that. And with NERCA, we are a proud partner. Rufus Coffee Shop is a proud partner of um, NERCA. We love your association and I'm so excited about that Thank and you. having you more involved with Rufus Coffee Shop too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Thank you so much. I'm, I'm very happy. And we have a couple. To... <laughs> yeah, tell me. Oh, we had one last question here. Um, do you have, um, oh, do you have any women project managers on your team? We have one. Her name is Jimena Arizia. She is a sweetheart. Um, she's actually a 24 year old. I recruited her in a Habitat for Humanity, even though we're not the biggest roofer by any chance, because of my, my upbringing, I made a pledge to Habitat to donate about two roofs a year to them. And she came in one of my job sites to volunteer as a painter. And I loved her energy and her smile, and I decided that she'd be a perfect fit. But it was really hard to take her because she was a uh, she was a psychology major from Clark University. <laughs> <laughs> so I told her that you could apply psychology into roofing because it's very much an emotional business. <laughs> we deal with so much emotion every day. And at first, again, it was about proving to her that this was worthy to be a career. But I found some unique ways to to achieve that and really it was about empowering her and I let her join me on the National Women Roofing. I let her join me and a lot of a lot of people have seen Jimena with me. I take her to a lot of events. Um, so yeah, she's a, she's a rock star, you know. Um, she's such an amazing attribution to the team and I've seen her come from, you know, psychology, wanting to be a psychologist and therapist to really owning it and becoming a leader in roofing as well. So she's like a mini, she's like a younger Greta. Even though I'm only 30, but I'm a little bit younger, Greta. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? National Women in Roofing is doing a huge recruitment campaign right now for people outside the industry to join us. So that's a perfect example. And on, obviously on the coffee shop, we have we are encouraging people to come in, use the classified. So you are really setting the tone for um, to think roofing, to think about roofing, and you've proven it. So Thank you. Thank that you. Is great. Well, that's that's why I call myself a rootless entrepreneur because I had no roots yeah. in this industry, but I build my own. So thank you to everyone for listening. I hope that my story and my pathway into roofing will inspire you to, to for your own, and and hopefully will inspire you to recruit 
um, others to join this incredible industry that we're a part of. Yes, yes, I love it. And I wanna say thank you, Greta. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you to everybody for being on Coffee Conversations this morning. Next week, we will have um, the ladies, the marketing specialists, Kim Eckerson and Melissa Dunson from Tamco. Um, and we're just going to talk marketing. I'm really excited about that. And it's going to be the finale of this season. So um, please come back and hear what's happening out there across the board on marketing wise and what contractors can be using. So it's all going to be thank along you. those lines and branding. So thank you, Greta. And thank you, everybody. Please listen to this on Coffee Conversations. It is being recorded and you can listen to Greta all over again. So have a great day. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Bye.